Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Hilal Life. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we stand with the topic of uh, land and homelessness, especially in the Western Cape. Back in studio, Iksan Higgins. Iksan, thanks for joining us uh, on this Shukran session as well. You and You're welcome. And then also you. member of National Parliament, uh, Nazir Paulson. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and shukran for having us. Afwan, only a pleasure. It's such an important topic, such a pertinent issue that I think to a large degree seems to be overlooked. Uh, Nazir, you've worked on the ground. You've been throughout South Africa looking at various communities that have these questions, vital questions that they've posed prior yes. to elections and were hoping to get some type of reprieve post-elections as well. What's the current situation in terms of your research and work on the ground? Well, look, man, and, and you're correct, it's a very pertinent issue and it's pertinent and I'd like to address it from the perspective of not just land for personal use for residents, but also land for industrial mining activity, land for agricultural activity. <laughs> and, and those are with, we feel that that's the that that would help us reorganize mm -hmm. South African society. At the moment, uh, we say that we are a food secure country, yeah. so there's enough food in the country for everyone. But we nutritionally secure because not everyone can afford food. Of course. So what is the alternative? You know, for anybody, for any African, if any black person to go hungry, it's unnecessary. Of course. If you were to give people land, they'd be able to take care of the nutritional needs. Mm. If you gave people land, you won't have homeless people walking in the city, mm -hmm. camping outside of the castle. So land is an essential part of reorganizing South African society. We are a landless nation, <laughs> and that landlessness has led to poverty, hunger, and homelessness. Absolutely. So if we were to expropriate land, and the EFF founding manifesto, the first non-negotiable cardinal pillar is land expropriation without compensation for equal distribution in use. And I think that equal distribution in use is, is perfectly distilled when we say land, first and foremost, mm -hmm. for, as a place to live, but also land for agricultural Absolutely. activity, land for industrial or mining activity. Okay, brilliant. I, I think those are very valid points, and, and this is where most South Africans' minds are right now as well. Iksan, from a legal point of view, but more importantly, what is the situation in Cape Town right now with regards to people being removed, forcefully removed, off the streets, number one, and then also from government housing as well? Has it been done according to, you know, the, the legal uh, route or were there avenues that seem to be a little bit suspect? Well, let's start again with the Constitution. People cannot remove, be removed anyway without a court order. Right. It's a constitutional principle. So every uh, entity, whether it is local government, provincial government, national government, they are obliged to go via the courts. Mm -hmm. You can't just remove people. And uh, so I think that that's the first good thing. But as I said earlier on, uh, forced removal must, or rather evictions, mm -hmm. must be accompanied with a resettlement situation. Okay. I mean, I do see that there has been an, uh, an effort by the city and or the province and or the national government to create spaces, safe spaces, mm. for people that are homeless. Mm. And then it's, it's, it's quite uh, strange that we're sitting here talking about this today because today is the 16th, tomorrow is the 17th, and the homeless people that, 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 that's living there at the castle, on the side of the castle, tomorrow is their D-Day. Mm. So we will be monitoring tomorrow whether those people are going to be evicted in a humane manner. Right. Uh, and also uh, placed. And um, placed in, place, in, in places of safety. Gotcha. But I think that is probably where we should be heading. We can't just uh, evict people and ignore the fact that these people must sleep somewhere. Of course. I mean, these people are afflicted by social ills like drug addiction, yes. um, alcoholism, 
um, abuse, uh, GBV, abuse, yeah. uh, there, there's violence. Uh, so all these things are afflicting these homeless people. So these people are actually in need of assistance. Of course. And the state must provide this assistance. Gotcha. Uh, I'm 100% with you as well. Um, Nazir, we, we do know the issues are out there. We do know it's, on, you know it's out for everybody to see. But where to from now? What, what can we do to try and, and alleviate some of these issues? Because it just seems to get worse and worse every year. Uh, look, man, I, I think the idea of these safe spaces for homeless people is a good idea, but it, it's, it's, but it's only the start. Okay. As Ikshan said, they, uh, there are many afflictions, but uh, also many of, of, so these safe spaces, it's either you go into the men's section or the women's section. Gotcha. Right? Right. It's just to provide the, the city a mechanism for evicting people from land. So they have to go into these because before you get an eviction order, mm -hmm. you have to say what alternate arrangements or what alternate options are available to people being evicted. Yeah, but so, in, in the same breath, I mean, we've had Blicky's thought yeah. that has been there for over 15 it, it, years. Exactly. And they were supposed to have gotten houses. Yes, yeah, I, I agree with you because besides the, the housing shortage, you also have mass unemployment. Yeah. And many of these people are artisans or people that, will, that you can skill to build their own homes. So you can, but, but here's the problem. Housing delivery is privatized and outsourced. The mm. state does not build houses. Mm. They provide whatever funding is necessary, but they outsource it to a contracting company. Whereas in the past, or well, let's say the alternative, where the state had a, a housing construction company, okay, yeah. it's, it's, it's mandate is to deliver houses, not make profit. Private companies, mm. their mandate, make profit. Um, they want less people to employ because it increases the profit margin. Whereas a state-run mm. housing construction or construction company that would not just deliver houses, but hospitals and yeah. schools and health services like uh, roads and, and uh, sewage and all of those things. Facilities so, that, that's yeah, needed. Yeah, facilities. So, so definitely the, the idea is not to, uh, currently, is not to, to build that capacity within the state. Because the state would also be able to absorb all the unemployed labor, reskill them, Good point. Uh, those people that need to be skilled. So we are saying a state construction company responsible for all construction projects that would deliver services to the people, whether it's housing, healthcare, mm. schooling, the state can provide that. Okay. Is that a viable option, uh, Iksan? I mean, you spoke earlier about corporate getting involved and getting a bit of a tax break. Could that could this not be in a com component that they could incorporate? Well, look, I'm not uh, uh, completely disagreeing with Nazir, although m my approach would be a little bit more um, accommodating of the private sector, mm -hmm. is to say that uh, there should be private-public uh, partnerships, yeah. PPPs, and of course the state would still then dictate the, um, the process. Mm. But I do not believe it's going to take us a very, very long time to build that capacity within mm. the state. Mm. And the, the need for housing is a, a lot more urgent. And there's a whole lot of excuses. The excuses is things like corruption, mm. is, and, 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 and this, what you call it, this construction mafia. mafia yeah. mm. These are all excuses. One can actually create a framework to deal with these things swiftly. Right. I mean, why must the trial take three years for if I have a corruption matter mm. or, or, a, or this construction mafia thing is now going to take three, four years? You, don't have, you, can, you can have specialized courts for these things mm. Mm. and then, of course, deal with it immediately okay. and, 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 and give a minimum sentence for yeah. this type of thing. I agree. Uh, in closing, uh, Nazir, uh, any last comment from your side with regards to the housing and the homelessness issue? Well, uh, um, look, man, I think. The ultimate and the ideal is the state takes full responsibility for housing construction, amongst other things, housing, mm. hospitals, schools. Um, if we have, uh, if we look at during COVID, China could build a, a hospital for COVID purposes mm. Mm. very quickly. They had the land, they had the skills, they had the capacity to do it. So if we, if we want to really have a a state that delivers services to its people. Yeah. We need a state that is going to have capacity, the capacity 
to deliver services like housing, healthcare, mm. education. Mm. We also have school shortage. We of haven't course. even touched we that. Haven't, uh, we, have, we have a shortage of hospitals. Correct. Because all of those things have to be built by the private sector and we must provide the funding. Mm. Okay, gentlemen, thank you so, so much. I think we've touched on very important issues. Mm. Uh, we'll definitely continue this conversation as the months uh, go ahead. But we really thank you for your uh, time and effort for coming into the studio. Have a great evening. Yeah, sugar and sugar sugar and to you. Yes. Here we go. Uh, very important points uh, from two gentlemen that work on the ground and uh, are very aware of our situation in South Africa. That's all that we have for you for Hilal Live. Uh, do join us uh, tomorrow for another edition uh, from the Cape Town team. So Hale Barnes and myself, Luqman Shadrach. Have a great evening. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>